you guys have seen the Popeye stuff, right? I'm pretty sure it's not big news. It's not new news for you guys. But the fight compilations of Popeyes are really funny. Um, but then, you know, it didn't get funny when someone eventually ended up dying, right? There's a story of somebody died at fucking Popeyes. This fucking chicken burger that everyone's getting insane about. And it's weird because I remember I went to, when I went to New York, 2007 or wherever, wherever whenever it was, we went to New York, had an amazing time, fucking loved it. And I ended up going to Popeyes, not because I knew what it was, but because it was just um, shiny. I remember it being lit up. You know, all the shops in fucking America, you know, they, they don't fucking scrimp on the LEDs. They, you know, they crank up that brightness super, super hard. So I just remember it just kind of screaming to me like a beacon from across the street. Walked over, went in and realized, oh, this is quite, this is the population that I've kind of heard about. You know, sometimes American spots, especially being a British dude or a British guy or somebody that doesn't live in America, there are things that you recognize or you know or you're very familiar with um, in American culture because you've you've absorbed so much of it through movies, films, whatever it may be, and literature. That sometimes you go there and you subconsciously um it's a, it jumps up from your subconscious like oh shit this is where i am i'm in this place but at the time you don't really realize it was you're doing it um it's like when i drank a 40 i didn't necessarily make the connection with kids at that scene when casper puts the, the 40 in his um trousers i was like oh yeah shit that's that same drink that they were drinking in um in the um in kids um the, the movie that kind of you know is eventually blew up and became the kind of bible for most supreme kids coming up nowadays or you know new York skateboarding culture but anyway I remember going to Popeyes and ordering uh, a box of chips and some ch chicken strips. And the one thing I remember that was a really cool experience was that that whole box of chicken strips and chips was something that I shared amongst all our group of friends. It was so fucking um, not wholesome, but it was so filling. The chips were huge. The boxes, you know, usually your chicken boxes in in the U in the UK, you get that kind of normal standard chicken box. And then sometimes if you order like a big meal, they give you that bigger one. All of their big meals, all of their normal meals were those bigger boxes, those kind of extra large ones that you sometimes get. Like, it was insane. And that was just full to the brim with shit inside it, right? And I remember eating it and not and just not being able to finish it. Like, it's just, I just can't finish this, right? So, and it's not even like a not finish this in like a, oh, I'm, I'm only going to eat salad today way. No, in a legitimate, I cannot finish this. If I, if I try and finish this, I'm going to shit through my nostrils. So, I remember sharing it with my friends and, you know, it went around really well. Everyone was enjoying it. And then, you know, so it's quite funny to like see now nowadays that the same place that again it wasn't that full it wasn't that busy i'm not gonna lie i, I remember i remember chipotle being really busy at the time we went there that might have been <clears throat> during the kind of <clears throat> infancy of chipotle but i remember that being more busy <clears throat> so i can't even say there was hype around popeyes but it's interesting to see that now one burger can change a whole entire um, restaurant's kind of fortune and it's strange because america still has chick-fil-a which obviously only operates on some locations around the u.s but there's obviously other places that you can go to to get chicken burgers, right? Um, so it's just interesting to me why a place that isn't that popular to begin with in Popeyes has now suddenly introduced one item and it completely blew up. And if you read between lines on the internet, supposedly the recipe is not as good as it was when the first time around because they had one, they had the first kind of drop and then it kind of sold out and they couldn't get enough chicken or didn't have enough buns and then it drops again. And that's supposed to be the, all the things been changed. It doesn't, it doesn't even look that good from the images on the internet. When I've seen it, it just doesn't, it looks like a standard chicken burger with pickles in it. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's just me, but there's this really um, funny off. No, funny, you know, funny is a. Oh, they took it off the internet now. It's gone. I had a video, a fight compilation of um, Popeye stuff that somebody's removed on here. But, you know, what can you do? But there's now like a video here that says about some. This is a report about somebody dying at the Popeyes, right? Yeah. I don't think this is the actual video, is it? Fist fights, car crashes, even a murder. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty ridiculous, but all of that <laughs> is over a chicken sandwich. Some people are losing their minds over the newest offering from Popeyes. Greg Mills, seriously, a chicken sandwich. <laughs> Pat, Jeff, it <laughs> but should we be surprised though, really? Especially when you, when you think of the popularity of food trucks with the fact that, you know, there is obviously a demand for really tasty fried food because, you know, there's so many TV shows. Uh, how many food related tv shows are there on netflix at the moment there's too many too many to even watch in one lifetime so there's obviously a demand out there for people to watch these kind of shows you know um where essentially people are gorging themselves you know to death eating food that is covered in olive oil or deep fried or you know baked or some some nonsense compared some nonsense included in there so maybe it's not that far-fetched 
But again, I just it's just strange to me that considering just how big of a con- just how big of a nation America, the United States is, and how many places there are to eat. And you know, there's definitely people out there. There's definitely restaurants or bars and pubs or you know even hotels that probably do really mean burgers that you could go to that are kind of well known and kind of local favorite. So weird that this one chain is fine. It's fucking killed it like this. But you know, this is probably the power of marketing. It is unbelievable. I can't believe it. The line is out the door. I can't you see believe all it. The cars that are right here. It's been like this all it's been day insane. long. Insane. Yep. Q is going. All and this time. is where the hustle comes in if you're that Krispy Kremes dude because you're just going to keep ordering these things and selling them on fucking Facebook, right? Just not giving a flying fuck. I think I might do that, man, with the fucking chicken wings. Fuck it, I might give it a go. <laughs> Start selling chicken wings online. It's really good. I mean, it's worth it. Popeye's chicken sandwich. And <laughs> say, it's has... worth it. Worth a long wait in line. Like 30 to 45 minutes. Or at the drive through I've been here for about 20 minutes. But is there is anything it... that you've eaten recently that has actually lived up to that kind of um, expectation? I think the cl- only only thing I can think of that was really good that, that I had that was amazing was when I went to In-N-Out in L.A. That was one thing that I kind of built, I kind of, you know, built up in my head. And when I went there, I was like, okay, this is the best burger I've ever had. I got the hype. But everything else has been like, yeah, it's cool, but it's not like, you know, I don't know. It's just cool, isn't it? Like Shake Shack. When it eventually came to London, I had it. Cool. But I was like, yeah, cool. There's nothing that's really kind of blown me away. So I can only imagine what it must take for somebody to drip, put, jump in their car in the middle of, I don't know, crazy traffic. Most of these Popeyes are probably located in very densely populated neighborhoods and go and queue on the drive through for Popeyes and then have the added danger that someone might stab you in the neck if you jump in front of them in a queue. Is it worth the wait for this crunchy chicken sandwich if you crunch your car in the process? Yeah, these guys are all insane. Is this chicken sandwich worth a life? A man was killed after cutting line in Maryland just to get one of these chicken sandwiches. If you want to go in front of me, go ahead. I ain't tripping. I exactly. ain't gonna lose my life over chicken sandwich. Yeah, that's insane. But yeah, so many fights and whatever it may be. Again, maybe there's a lesson learned there. Don't jump in front of people in queues. There's nothing that drives me more insane. It actually got me thinking about just, you know, service in general in restaurants or in places. There is a shop or supermarket near where I live which will remain nameless where the person that works in there that, that looks after the hot deli place where I go get my chicken fries and stuff for my chicken salads, he's never there on time. He's always late. Or whenever I'm there and he's prepared the stuff, he's never at the station. It just drives me nuts. There's nothing I hate more than really bad, um, than people that are really bad at their job, especially people that work in the service industry. Because most of the time, there's this common understanding between the customer and the employee that, you both don't want to be there, right? Especially, like, imagine the, the Monday, the Monday after Sunday, right? Um, after work, no one wants to do, imagine you haven't done your shopping during the weekend and you decide to do it after work on a Monday. You're going to be met with everybody else in the f- whole fucking country who decided to go there too because everyone else is lazy. So it's fucking rammed. No one wants to be spending their Monday after the first day back f- at, at work on after the weekend in a shopping center. So just make the experience easy, right? I don't want to be here. You, you don't want to work here today because you've got the worst type of people in, in the shop. But some some employees don't give a fuck. They're just gonna they're just gonna exasperate the issue, turn it into some sort of beef, and then suddenly you guys have this weird back and forth argument over what a couple of chicken wings. It makes no sense. And this guy just silently drives me nuts. He's sometimes you stand at the fucking deli station and there's no one there. And what makes it even more infuriating is people around you, right, working, doing again. They're not they're not working on the deli. They're doing the other stuff. They might be working on the butcher stand or working in another place. But they make no indication to try and get their colleagues to come out because, you know, they just, they just, they just assume their colleague's going to come out when he comes out. There's no um, thought, there's no kind of thinking about the customer. Oh, shit, this guy's been waiting for ages. Let's try and see if our colleague is in the toilet or something. Or, I don't know, on the, in the, in the, in the probably in the staff room looking at his phone. Because I know if I was working there, I'd be doing the same thing. But, I don't know, be clever, man. Like, use your common sense. I don't know, like, maybe do it towards the end of the day. In the beginning of the morning when you know everyone's going to be in there popping in before they go to work. Why don't you just stay at your station? It's the one thing that kind of annoys me sometimes. Sometimes I think looking at these fights at Popeyes, some of it can be, you know, it's something you don't encourage. But there is this episode of me where it's like, I'm sure some of the times it's like the people in there have, have waited long enough as it is. So they're already kind of, you know, running on thin ice in terms of patience. Um, you know, you're in a hot place full with fucking, you know. Um, the smell of fried food all over the place, not much ventilation, everyone's kind of agitated and wanting to get the fuck out of there so they can get go and eat their burger. So if anything, the staff members should be trying to kind of really kind of simmer everyone down, not responding to people at their level of kind of annoyance. And sometimes, you know, if the if the staff people are taking ages to make the burgers and they're 
walking around and they do that thing where they kind of drag their feet on the floor and stuff it just can drive you nuts as a customer because you're like come on man i know this job is shit but if you if you act like if you're kind of slumping your shoulders and acting like a shithead and not wanting to help anyone it's just going to make the job even harder and i've worked service job industry honestly i know what it's like to be working on the shop floor on boxing day right i know i know how bad it is but